Welcome back to Fulger Channel, where we bring you the latest updates on global events. Today, we dive into a high-stakes confrontation in the East China Sea that has captured the world's attention. U.S., Canadian, and Japanese warships closely shadowing Chinese vessels have sparked concerns about the future of the region. The East China Sea, a hotspot for territorial disputes, has once again become a focal point of international tension. The presence of U.S., Canadian, and Japanese warships shadowing Chinese counterparts has raised alarms worldwide. A Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy-guided missile destroyer shadowed U.S., Japanese, and Canadian warships as they conducted a trilateral exercise in the East China Sea on Wednesday according to a report by Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Meanwhile, on Friday, the Philippines successfully carried out a resupply mission to its outpost at 2nd Thomas Shoal in the disputed Spratly Islands, despite opposing actions by China Coast Guard and Chinese maritime militia ships. Shows a Pilan Type 052T Luoyang II class destroyer sailing near the Allied ships, along with sailing parallel with the ships as they conducted a photo exercise and making a radio call identifying itself as Chinese warship 161, the hull number for Pilan destroyer CNS Hohat. Royal Canadian Navy frigate HMCs Ottawa, which is on deployment to the Indo-Pacific region. The Chinese frigate did not carry out any untoward action and gave way when U.S. Navy destroyer U.S. Ralph Johnson radioed the p ship that it was going to make a turn according. p ships operating in the Indo-Pacific routinely shadow Western and Japanese ships operating in the region, particularly in areas where China claims sovereignty such as the South China Sea. In April, Captain Tony Chavez, then commanding officer of U.S. Macon Island, told USNI News during an interview that the Mackin Island Amphibious Ready Group had been shadowed on occasions by p ships during its deployment. Though interactions were professional, while we are in the South China Sea, we did see that China, at the Nine Dash Line, will challenge you with a shadow. They'll put a DDG or a frigate, who will shadow the force at about five to eight nautical miles or so, but everything we have conducted with China has been routine and professional. They ask us a couple of questions, we answer them, and after that, they shadow us through the South China Sea as we transition through there," Chaves said. He elaborated that China's questions were the ARG ships, all numbers, how many personnel on board and direction the ARG was heading, among others, and that some of the questions were answered while others were not. After that, they'll maintain their shadow and we transition and continue operations as normal. They do not stop any of our operations, and we continue to transition and operate as we see fit. A Friday release by the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force stated that helicopter destroyer JS Izumo and destroyer JS Samadair, part of the first surface unit of the JNS DF Indo-Pacific Deployment 2023, together with a JNS DF submarine, carried out the trilateral U.S.-Japan-Canada exercise Noble Stingray with Ottawa and Ralph Johnson from Tuesday to Wednesday in the sea and airspace south of Okinawa. Through the exercise, we improved our tactical capabilities and strengthened cooperation with the U.S. Navy and the Royal Canadian Navy, said Rear Admiral Takahiro Nishiyama, Commander, 1st Surface Unit, IPD-23 and Commander of Escort Flotilla in the release. The JNSDF will continue to strengthen cooperation with allied and like-minded partners for improving the security environment in the Indo-Pacific region and to promote mutual understanding with countries in the region for maintaining rules-based maritime order. A second JMSDF release stated that anti-submarine warfare drills were carried out in the exercise. The Japanese ships and submarine had earlier carried out anti-submarine drills in the South China Sea on Monday, while Ralph Johnson on the same day had been conducting a joint sail with the Philippine Navy in the South China Sea. Ottawa, together with sister ship AMCS of Vancouver and fleet oiler MV Asterix, are on a five-month deployment to the Indo-Pacific region with Ottawa focusing on Southeast Asia, 
while Vancouver operates in Northeast Asia, and MV Asterix conducts replenishment operations for both frigates and other partner nation ships in the region. The CBC report also stated that on Tuesday a Dongjin class surveillance ship passed by Ottawa, and earlier in the morning while it was dark, a small Chinese ship flashed laser lights at Ottawa and launched a drone at it, though the drone kept its distance from the Canadian frigate. Chinese fighter jets also have approached Ottawa at high speed before turning away at a distance of 32 kilometers, and a Pilan Jankai class frigate also has been shadowing Ottawa on occasions, according to the CBC report. On Friday, the Philippines conducted the successful resupply mission of its outpost on the grounded LSTBRP Sierra Madre at 2nd Thomas Shoal in the disputed Spratly Islands. The resupply mission follows the successful resupply mission on August 22 and a partially successful mission on August 5, in which only one of the two supply ships reached the outpost as the Chinese Coast Guard used water cannons on Philippine ships. Philippine Coast Guard spokesperson Commodore J. Terriella stated that PCG patrol vessels BRP Cabra and BRP Sindangan escorted the two supply boats and were subjected to harassment from China Coast Guard and Chinese maritime militia ships. The routine Rora mission was again subjected to dangerous maneuvers by the four China Coast Guard and four Chinese maritime militia. The Philippines National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea issued a release stating that it strongly deplores and condemns the continued illegal, aggressive and destabilizing conduct of the CCG and the CMM within the Philippines' economic exclusion zone. We reiterate what President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said during the recently concluded 43rd ASEAN Summit regarding the South China Sea. Practical cooperation in the maritime domain can only flourish with an enabling environment of regional peace, security and stability anchored in international law. The China Coast Guard said in a Friday statement that the Philippine ships had entered the area without Chinese government permission. The Chinese Coast Guard issued stern warnings, followed up throughout the entire process, and effectively regulated Philippine ships in accordance with the law. China has indisputable sovereignty over the Nancha Islands, including Ren Ed Reef and its adjacent waters, and firmly opposes the Philippines' illegal transportation of illegal building materials to warships that sit on the beach illegally. The China Coast Guard will continue to carry out rights protection and law enforcement activities in waters under China's jurisdiction in accordance with the law. Recent diplomatic meetings between these nations and China have failed to ease tensions, leading to this high-stakes game of cat and mouse at sea. The geopolitical implications are significant. The East China Sea holds vital shipping routes, rich fishing grounds, and potentially vast energy resources. It's a region where national interests collide. To gain further insight, we've invited experts to discuss the potential consequences of this standoff and its impact on regional stability. This situation has the potential to disrupt trade routes and create instability not just in the East China Sea, but also globally. It's crucial for all parties involved to find a diplomatic solution before it escalates further. As tensions continue to simmer in the East China Sea, the world watches closely. Be sure to subscribe to Folger Channel for updates on this developing story and more. Thank you for joining us today. Stay informed, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.